Alright, so welcome to Pinoy Dev, and this is the very first video lesson of this channel. And in this episode, we're going to learn JavaScript. We will start with the basics, of course, kasi kailangan natin yun para mas madali na lang sa ating gumamit ng iba't ibang JavaScript frameworks later like React or Angular. Okay? Alright, so in this learning episodes, we will discuss first a little recap of what is JavaScript, the text editor that we're going to use, and then we will start to know on how to use and utilize the console. We will also learn how to declare variables like var, let, and const, data types, math objects, conditional statements like f, fls, for each, switch, and then we will proceed on how to manipulate the DOM or the document object model. We will also learn how to create and call functions using ES5 and ES6 standards. Okay, so during these sessions, we will be using some frameworks like Bootstrap, Skeleton CSS, Materialized CSS, and more. Then we will proceed to a more advanced topic like synchronous and asynchronous callbacks, error handling technique, object-oriented classes and inheritance, building some apps from scratch, connecting the app to MySQL or MongoDB, and so on. All right? So what is JavaScript? Well, JavaScript is just another programming language to create interactive web pages. You might say, pwede rin mang PHP, pwede rin ASPX, or pwede rin namang pure HTML lang. So, bakit kailangan pa nating pag-aralan ng JavaScript? Well, if you want to display information without reloading the page, dun napapasok ang JavaScript. Dun muna kailangan ng JavaScript. Aside from that, JavaScript is the only programming language that can run natively on the browser. Ibig sabihin, kaya niyang i-manipulate ang DOM or a document object model without the use of any frameworks. Okay? Ano bang ibig sabihin ng DOM or the document object model? Isipin nyo na lang para siyang interface ng web page nyo. So, ibig sabihin, ginagamit siya ng JavaScript mo or ng program mo para i-manipulate yung contents ng page mo, yung structure ng page mo, at ang mga styles na in-apply mo sa page mo. So, guys, baka in the future, ma-encounter nyo itong mga words na to like ES5, ES6, ES7, ES8, ES9. These are just called JavaScript standards, okay? So, meaning... Every standard have new features, some are deprecated, some are being updated, and some new features are being added. So, wag kayong makonfuse ang mga words na yan. Wag na nating patagalin pa. For this tutorial, we'll be using the Microsoft Visual Studio Code Editor. So, open up your browser and navigate to code.visualstudio.com. Okay? So, it doesn't matter kung Windows, Mac, or Linux yung machine mo. I-click mo lang tong arrow na to. Okay? Click mo lang yan. At mada-download mo na yung version or package para sa computer mo. So, di na natin kailangan ng mga complex na setup dito since JavaScript is client-side. Ibig sabihin, dun siya nag sa client machine kung saan na-open yung web page mo. So, even though you can use some other editors like Atom, Aos Cloud9, I think, if you want to create JavaScript or make JavaScript using online or from the cloud, you can even use Sublime Text, NetBeans, Eclipse, Adobe Dreamweaver, uh, Notepad++. So it's up to you to choose, but I highly recommend using the VS Code Editor for all your web development tasks, and we're going to be using Google Chrome as our default browser in this lesson, right? Okay, so since I'm using Windows machine, I'm going to just click download for Windows for now. Okay, and then the file size is around 50.7 MB. Hintayin lang natin matapos yung download. And then we will proceed with installation instruction. Alright, so just click on the file. And then the installation wizard will show up just like this. Uh, just click on I accept the agreement. Click on the next button. Click the next once again. And click next once more. And then this is very important right here. I want you to check these three check boxes right here. The first one is create a desktop icon. The second one is add open with code action to Windows Explorer. So this is very important if you want to open your folder. You can just right click on it and open directly to VS Code. So check that one and then check on the second one. Click on the next button and click install. Okay. So we will just wait for the installation to finish. And after that we will set up our first JavaScript sandbox folder in our desktop. So just uncheck and click finish. Alright, so as you can see, na-install na natin yung Visual Studio Code. Ito na yung icon niya. Ngayon, gagawa tayo ng isang folder sa desktop. Dito natin ilalagay lahat ng mga project files na gagawin natin sa episode na to at sa mga susunod pang episode. So, right-click na kayo sa desktop nyo. 
click on new and then folder I'm gonna name this folder as JS Toots, a shortcut for JavaScript tutorial. Pero it's up to you kung anong ipapangalan nyo sa folder na to, okay? If you remember the settings that we did before when we installed Visual Studio Code, ito na yun guys, tingnan nyo, pwede ko siyang i-right click yung folder na yan, and then i-click ko lang tong open with code like that, automatic magbubukas na siya dun sa Visual Studio Code. So ito na yung folder, wala pa siyang laman kasi wala na tayong mga files dito. And the first time you saw when you open Visual Studio Code is this welcome screen, okay? On the left side, we have the some shortcuts like to create a new file, open a folder. On the right side, we have the customization. Mga updates ng Microsoft, dito din lalabas, okay? I'm just gonna give you a quick tour of the Visual Studio Code GUI. Here on the left, we have some icons. The first one is Explorer, okay? So, dito mo magkikita yung project files mo, mga folders na ginawa mo. Mga files like HTML, CSS, JavaScript. So, nandito siya lahat. The second icon is search. So, kunyari napakahaba na ng codes na ginawa mo, hindi mo lang kailangan mag-scroll pa dito. Search mo lang dito kung gusto, anong gusto mong hanapin, lalabas na siya. Pwede rin, kunyari napakarami na ng project files mo dito, pwede mo rin i-search dito. Okay? So, the third one is source control. Ito yung ginagamit para ma-link mo yung project mo sa GitHub. Sa mga di pa nakakalam, yung GitHub, para siyang uh, cloud-based online code repository. So, pwede mong i-maintain yung program mo doon. Kunyari, may mga version yung program mo, version 1, 2, 3, etc. So, mas madali siyang i-maintain actually sa GitHub. Gagawan lang ako ng separate video tutorial para dyan, para mas maintindihan nyo. Right? So, the fourth icon is debugging. Kung gusto mong mag-set ng breakpoints sa codes mo for debugging purposes, Pwede natin gamitin to. So, later, i-demonstrate ko rin kung paano siya gamitin. The last one is extensions. So, dito ka makaka-install mga extensions na pwede mong gamitin sa program mo. Kunyari, gumagawa ka ng Python na program. So, gusto mo ng intelligence ng Python. So, pwede ka mag-install dito para mas mapadali yung uh, trabaho mo. Okay? Alright. So, before we start, may mga settings lang akong babaguhin. So, pwede kang pumunta sa File, Preferences, and Settings. Or pwede rin i-click mo tong manage na icon ito. Okay? Click on settings. Baguhin ko lang yung font size ko. Make it around 25 or 26. Para mas madali yung mahita. And then, babaguhin ko rin tong word wrap na to. I-on ko lang siya. Para di na mag-diretso-diretso yung codes ko. Kunyari, pagdating niya sa border ng window, automatically mag-break na siya. Mapupunta na siya sa second line. Okay? So, just close the settings. Now, blank ko pa yung folder natin. Ito yung folder natin na ginawa, di ba? So, nakita nyo dito sa right side, may mga icons tayo. The first one is new file. The second one is create folder or new folder. So, kunyari sa GS Tots na folder na to, gusto mong gumawa pa ng isang folder, so click mo lang yan. The third one is refresh and the last one is collapse, okay? So, ngayon gagawa tayo ng dalawang file lang muna. Okay? Click mo lang yan. And then, we're gonna name this file as index.html and the second one go ulit tayo I'm gonna name this as main.js so the first one is html file and the second one is javascript file okay one of my favorite functionalities of visual studio code editor is ang tinatawag nating emit so ano ba yung emit para siyang code completion or code block completion for a certain character, kunyari nag-press ka lang ng certain character sa keyboard mo, ilalabas sa yung code block na nakalaan para sa character na yun. So, ipapakita ko sa inyo, i-click nyo lang ulit yung HTML file natin. Yan. Kunyari nag-press ako ng punctuation key sa keyboard ko, then followed by the tab key. Yan, binigyan niya ako ng isang buong code block ng HTML structure. So, pwede ko nang gamitin to, pwede ko nang palitan ng title to. Ano ba ang pinaka-trending ngayon sa social media? Uh, right? Manok na pula. Okay. Another thing, di mo na kailangang i-type completely yung script tags. Kunyari, maglalagay tayo ng h1 dito. So, usually, di ba, tinatype natin ganyan, tapos h1. So, di na kailangan yan. Pwede mo nang i-press derecho yung h1 followed by the tab key. Ganyan. So, may h1 ka na. So, copy mo lang yan. Or maglagay ka lang dito ng kahit anong h1 mo. Try natin i-preview sa browser natin. Control S. Then punta lang tayo sa folder natin. Itong GS Tots na ginawa natin. Ngayon ito siya. Ito yung index file natin. Open mo lang. Yun. 
Mayroon na tayong index.html. Okay? Minimize lang natin konti ito. Alright, so, ngayon, gagamit tayo ng extensions para mas mapadali yung trabaho natin. Kasi pag tingnan nyo guys, pag binago ko itong pula na to nilagyan ko ng uh, manok na red, and then control S, di siya actually lalabas agad dito sa browser. Kailangan ko pang i-press yung refresh button dito. Okay? So, medyo extra work pa siya para sa akin. So, punta lang tayo dito. And then dito sa search bar, type mo lang live server. Like that. Then, lalabas na siya. I-extend lang natin. Dito para makita natin yung icon. So, ganyan yung icon niya guys sa live server. Click mo lang yung install. So, ang purpose nito, mag-automatic refresh na yung browser natin. So, after natin ma-install, i-close lang natin. Okay. To use live server, hindi mo na kailangan pumunta pa dito para i-click yan. I-right click mo na lang yung file mo. Ganyan. Tapos, open with live server. So, pwede mo siyang gamitin sa CSS mo. Pwede mo siyang gamitin sa, ano pa ba, ECSS na file mo. Or sa Python na file mo. But, di mo siya pwede gamitin sa mga scripts like JavaScript right here. Kita mo, hindi lumalabas ang live server dito. Okay? So, back to HTML file. I-preview natin siya using live server. Right click and then open with live server. Okay, close mo natin yung previous tabs na yan. Ito na siya guys. Okay? Example, ibalik ko siya sa pula. Itong H1 na to. And then, press control S. See that? Automatically, nag-change na siya. Hindi ko na kailangan i-press tong refresh button na ito. Alright? So guys, makikita nyo dito sa address bar. Mayroon na tayong, ito yung address ng computer na to or local host natin. Followed by the port. So ito yung ginagamit ng live server. Kung i-stop nyo yung live server, click nyo lang to. So ngayon, nasa port 500 siya, di ba? Click mo lang yan. Yan, nagkuklose na yung live server. Kita nyo, server is now offline. So, kahit baguhin ko yan, ibalik ko yan sa red, and then control S, hindi na siya magbabago. Kasi nga, nakastop na yung live server mo. Pag ni-refresh mo yan, wala ka na makikita. Okay? Alright guys, so now we have installed live server. The second extension that we're going to install is a material icon theme. Purpose niya is, parang gagawin niya lang itong mas maganda itong mga icons ito. You wanna look at a little bit more fancy. So, click on extensions once again. And then right here, you will just type material icon. So, lalabas na siya. There are two types here. The one is material theme, which will change all the looks of the Visual Studio Code Editor GUI. Um, kailangan lang natin is itong material icon theme na to. So, click mo lang install. After that, lalabas na siya dito sa command palette. Ito yung command palette na tinatawag natin. So, pag bumalik ka sa explorer mo, yan, kita mo, nag-iba na siya. So, parang mas maganda na yung mga icons niya sa dati, di ba? Okay? So, the third extension that I want you to install is the ES6 IntelliSense. So, since later magko-code tayo ng mga ES5 and ES6 standards, kailangan natin IntelliSense ng ES6. So, type mo lang dito, GS, ES6. Okay? Itong lalabas na siya. Itong JavaScript ES6 code standards, code snippets. Click mo lang yan. Install. Alright, so after that, close mo lang. Mayroon na tayong ES6 IntelliSense na naka-install. So later, magagamit na natin yan. Alright, back to emit functionality. Let's move on to assigning classes or IDs to a certain thug. So for example, itong H1 guys, lagyan natin siya ng class. So di mo na kailangan i-type yung h1 na word and then followed by a class like that equals so sa emit ang gagawin mo type mo lang yung h1 and then if it is a class press mo lang that followed by the class name that you want so example red chicken okay oh and then press the tab key in your keyboard all right so what if id naman instead of a class instead of that you will just press H1 followed by the hash key. And then the ID of your choice. Uh, let's make this block chicken. And press the tab key on your keyboard. Now you now have 
the h1 tag with an id okay so if it's a class h1 dot followed by the class name if it is an id h1 and then the hash key then followed by the id of your choice and then press the tab key on your keyboard okay so that's another example okay so let's move on to a dev tag pag tinipe mo yung emit na hash or dot automatically ang default niyan is dev so for example hash uh, num1 press the tab key now you have a dev with a num1 and now we will try it with class dot num2 and then press the tab key in your keyboard now you have a dev with a class all right so now let us link this uh, main.js that we have kasi dito natin ilalagay yung mga javascripts natin although you can type your javascript here in the index.html like this you just type script or you can just type directly script like this and press the tab key in your keyboard now you have the script tags so pwede ka actually mag type na ng javascript mo dito sample uh, alert ano bang ilagay natin alert dito ah uh, Hello world. Okay? Press control S on your keyboard and now you have this alert. So, na execute ng JavaScript natin. All right, so let's do another one. Document that right. Let's try some addition right here. 5 plus 4. Press control S. Now we have the alert followed by the 9 which is the document that right right here. 5 plus 4 equals 9 and then our H1 which is manok in red. Okay? Ang problema nito, guys, what if napakahaba na ng JavaScript mo? So, parang sturdy siyang tingnan kung nandito lang siya lahat sa index.html file mo. Kaya, kailangan dito natin siya ilagay sa main.js file natin. So, para malink natin yung main.js natin, so, il ilipat ko lang to dito, ha? Copy ko lang yan. Ilipat ko lang dito sa main.js natin. Okay? Ilipat ko lang yan. Okay? So, tanggalin natin yan. Gagawin din natin siya sa script. Pero, lalagyan na natin siya ng source. Okay? So, script, colon, and then src, which is the source, and press the tab key in your keyboard. Now, you'll just type here your JavaScript file, main.js, which is one right here. Okay? What if yung main.js mo is nasa loob ng folder pa dito? So, kunyari, yung gstots na folder mo, gumawa ka pa ng isang folder para lahat ng javascript mo nang doon. Kunyari, script yung, scripts yung pangalan ng folder na yun. So, type na lang dito, scripts slash. Okay? So, since nandun naman siya sa loob ng gstots, din na natin kailangang mag-type ng ganyan. So, once pinrest mo yung control s, tiyan nyo. Lalabas na siya, yung hello world. So, ganun pa rin. Kung ano yung nilagay natin dito, lalabas pa rin siya. But, malinis na siya kasi one line of codes na lang yun dito sa index.html file natin. Nandito na siya lahat. Alright? So, let's move on to the console. So, ano ba yung console? The console is a development tool used to log messages or if you want to debug and analyze your JavaScript. So, kailangan natin yung console. Okay? So, to show up the console in the browser, you can just press F12 on your keyboard. So, lalabas na yung console dito. Actually, development tools ang tawag dito kasi mayroon siyang elements, console, sources, network. But for now, we will just use the console. Okay? So, pwede rin palabas yung console. Click mo lang to. And then, click on more tools. And then, uh, developer tools. Okay? So, nandun yung console natin. You can enlarge the console by pressing the control on your keyboard and scroll your mouse wheel like that I think that one's better okay so sa console guys kunyari nagdi-debug tayo yun pwede natin ilag dito yung message na gusto natin para din na tayo kailangang mag-display pa ng alert dito sa browser mismo okay marami tayong magagawa sa console na to kunyari gustong palitan yung kulay ng h1 na to itong manok na di ba h1 yan ito so, what if palitan ko siya ng red na color? So, lagyan na natin siya ng ID. Ano bang ID yung nalagay natin? Uh, red chicken. Okay. Control S lang tayo. Para masave lang yung ID. And then dito sa console, gagamit tayo ng document element by ID. Even though wala pa tayo dito, but gusto ko lang ipakita sa inyo na pwede nyo gawin sa console to. 
okay so document that get element by id and then the id of the h1 or this one the id of that tag which is the red chicken that style dot color equals red okay, oops right so naging red na siya pwede ka ring mag multiply dito ng numbers 5 times 5 25 addition 5 plus 5 10 what else pwede ka ring gumawa ng alert like hello console okay press enter and then right there lumabas na siya what else? Pwede ka rin gumawa ng functions. So, even though wala pa tayo sa function, but then again, gusto ko na ipakita sa inyo na pwede rin dito. So, example, function, add, uh, let's make some parameter here, A, and then B equals what? Let's pick it 5. And then we will return the sum of A plus B. Okay? So, pag nag-press ka ng enter dito, undefined pa siya kasi wala pa siyang na-return kasi di pa natin di pa tayo nag-call sa function na add so pag ginamit na natin siya add and then we'll put on uh, what 5 right here press enter you will have 10 okay bakit 10 kasi yung nilagyan natin parameter is a lang kita nyo isang parameter lang nilagyan natin dito so wala tayong nilagay sa b kasi may 5 na dito sa b so that means a is 5 plus b na 5 equals 10. Alright? Pwede mo ring tingnan yung uh, HTML structure mo sa document na to. Type mo lang document and then press enter. Okay? Pag in-expand mo to, kinlik mo tong arrow na to, ito yung makikita mo. May HTML tag ka, may head ka, kita mo yung head na ginawa natin kanina, yung manok na pula, and then the body tag, ito na yun, red check, and ito yun, ito lahat yun. So, pwede mo siyang i-trace dito sa console lahat. Right now, we will log some text to the console using some codes from our main.js file right here. Gagawa tayo ng codes dito. Okay? So, to log to the console, uh, logging, wait, wait a minute. I just want to show you the comments in JavaScript. So, if you want to make a single comment in JavaScript, this is double backslash like that. And then, this one is a single comment. If you want a multi-line comment in JavaScript, you can just press the backslash followed by a star key. And then, it should end with a star key followed by a backslash. So, this is a multi-line comment. All right? Okay, so now let's start slugging the console. Comment lang natin dito, log to console. Now to log to the console, oops, we will just press console dot log. Uh, let's log some text first. Uh, what else? Mm, babae sa Egypt. Gari! <laughs> Gari! <laughs> okay, press Ctrl S on your keyboard. Now we have here in the console of Bias Egypt. Alright? So, it doesn't matter kung single quote or double quote nilagay mo. Basta string yan, pwedeng double quote or single quotes. So, lalabas pa rin siya. But, if it is a number, pag naglalag ka ng number, di mo na kailangan lagyan ng double quotes or single quotes yan. Diretso mo lang i-type yung number. What's the best number to type? I think 69. What? Press Ctrl S on your keyboard. Now you have 69. So guys, if napapansin nyo dito, yung kulay ng text is black. And then yung kulay ng numbers is blue. So, in the future, whenever you see like this in your console, pag blue siya, ibig sabihin numbers yan. Pag black siya, you know na text na yan. Alright? What else we can do with the console? Uh, so now we have text, we have numbers, 
you can also log booleans so we'll just copy this one so for the boolean you can just type false press control s labas say false chan so we did improve okay what else you can also log uh, variables okay so for example we have di pa tayo nakarating sa variable declaration but i'm just gonna show you that we can also log variables the console so if i declare var num1 equals 69 now we can just log this variable to the oops console like this then put num1 here side okay oops i forgot to add the log okay press control s now you have 69 right here that is how to log variable to the console okay so pwede rin no ba bang pwedeng ilog natin sa console uh, you can also log objects the console like console that log then the object or the object lateral it should be in close with parenthesis so the key which is what a gulay and then ano bang magandang gulay talong man then kama uh prudas what what kind of fruit banana okay press control s oops i think since it's a string we will just enclose this with quotes kasi string siya like that right so nandiyan na siya uh, what if we will add numbers right here price so if number hindi na kailangan ng quotes i think uh ano bang kilo ng gulay ngayon uh, 1000 so now we have here if you expand we have the key and the value right here so that's how to log objects or object lateral in the console we can also log on arrays you need to enclose arrays with brackets okay console.log like that and then open and close brackets so one two three four five press ctrl s and you have here your arrays now the index and the value so arrays start with zero right so you have your zero one two three four and the value is one two three four five you can also log mm, tables or table in the console console that table like that table you just need your objects okay so you know what i think object sa taas copy lang natin paste natin dito press ctrl s lalabas na yung table sa console mo all right what else we can log to the console mm, warnings this console that warn i think and then the warning text so babala E1 e karin ng joa mo ngayon. Press control S. Now, if you notice in the console, we have the yellow color in the text. And then a warning icon on the left side. So that means it's a warning. We can also log error. So, like console that error. And then you just have to write your error text. What is that? In E1 ka ng jowa mo kasi babayero ka. Okay? <laughs> so that's it guys. We have here the warnings and now we have error right here. So it's color red with the X icon on the left side. So I think that's it for the console. Even though you can still use some of the console property that you can find, you can just search in Google. But in this lesson, we're going to use most of the time is the console that log okay oh one more thing we can you can also clear the console by typing console that clear okay so by typing that press ctrl s what you clear your console see here console was cleared okay what else we have in the console we have time i think console that time and it should be Paired with console that time end. 
Okay? So, anong ginagawa nitong console that time is sa loob ng console that time and time bin, kunyari may may code ka dito na ganito, uh, console dot log uh, run me. Okay? So, itong console dot log na to, ilalag niya kung ilang milliseconds na run tong mga codes na to within sa time and time bin. Okay? Alright, so lagyan lang natin siya ng identifier, yung time. Like, uh, time executed. Lagyan lang natin dito. Here, we have a time executed in milliseconds. So, this is very important. If you have some codes and you want to know how much time it takes to execute a certain code, so you can use the console that time. You just have to make sure that you have the time and time into the end. And then your code is in the middle of it. Alright? What else we have here? You can also use console that count. So, for example, hindi pa natin na-try ito yung for each loop, but itatry natin dito. To just show you, you can also count how many iterations are in the loop by using the console that count. Okay? So, type lang natin dito. I equals 1. I what uh, less than or equal to 10 then I plus plus alright so to count the total iterations of the loop you can just type console dot count okay press control s oops we have some error here should be like that press control S, now you have your console that count here. So the default is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, 10. Okay? So, na-execute niya to. I think it's time to clear in the console. Console dot log. No, no, no. Console dot clear. Okay? I think it's best na lagyan natin ng comments to. So, log text. Copy lang natin yan. Lagyan natin ng comments para later. Pwede nyo siyang balikan for review purposes. Itong isa, log numbers. Ito, log booleans. Boolean. Boolean. Itong isa is log variables. Ito is to log object or object lateral itong isa is to log arrays ok ito is to log table log warning Itong isa is log error, log time, then log count, and this one is to clear console. Okay, so I think that's it for now. We'll just rename this one to console, right? Instead of index.html. Alright, so let's move on to variables. Okay? Para hindi tayo malito, gawa lang tayo ng isang folder pa dito sa JSTOTS. Click nyo lang to. Tapos, i-rename natin to to variables. Okay? So, para mas madali nyo siyang i-trace later kung magbabacktest na kayo or magbabackstudy na kayo. Alright? So, mayroon na tayong folder na variables. Inside this folder, we will create two files again. We need the index.html and the second one is the js file which is the main.js Okay? So the same thing, punta tayo sa index.html and then gagawa tayo ng blank html structure. Kung natutunan na natin ito sa mga previous lessons, you just press the punctuation key in your keyboard. Okay? Now we have 
the blank skill constructor of HTML. So we're gonna name this one as variables. Okay, copy ko lang yan. Then maglalagay tayo ng h1 dito. Alright. And then right click and preview it in our browser using the live server. Okay, so nandiyan na siya. And then kailangan natin i-link yung main.js natin. So to do that, script, source, tab key, and then main.js. Okay, so go back to, close lang natin to kasi ito pa yung mga luma yata. Alright, so let's move on to our main.js right here. In declaring variables, we, we will be using three keywords lang. We have the var, let, and the const. Var, nandun na yan, nung bago pa nagsimula yung JavaScript, ginagamit natin is usually var na. Itong let and const ay lumabas lang ito during the standard version of ESX. So later, i-explain ko sa inyo anong pinagkaiba ng var and let and const. Right? Dito, lagay lang natin var. Magko-comment lang tayo para di nyo malimutan. So var, we use this for declaring variables for global scope. Okay? So ibig sabihin, pwede mo siyang gamitin sa loob ng function or outside sa function mo. The other one is let. We use let for black level scope. So ibig sabihin ng let, ginagamit siya natin sa loob lamang ng black level scope. Ibig sabihin, nasa loob siya ng brackets. O ito. Oops. Meaning, inside brackets. Ano ba yung brackets? Ganyan yung brackets, di ba? O, yan. Like, nasa loob siya ng if statement mo, may bracket ka doon. O lahat ng black level scope mo may bracket. So, unlike sa var, pwede mo siyang gamitin sa loob ng black level scope. Pwede mo siyang gamitin outside sa black level scope. Kaya tinatawag siyang global scope. Okay? So, we also have const. So, from the word itself, const means constant. Ibig sabihin, hindi mo siya pwedeng baguhin. Hindi ka rin pwedeng mag-reassign ng value sa variable na yun. Okay? So, let's start with var. Var examples. Let's declare a variable for var here like var div name. I'm using the camel case style of declaring variables. Pag string, pwede kang magamit ng double quotes. Like that. Pinoy dev. Control S. Then, ilag lang natin siya sa console. Let's try. Console.log div name. Okay. Oops. Palabasin na natin yung console. F12 sa browser nyo. Right, so may string na tayo dito sa console. Pwede ring single quote lang. So it doesn't matter kung single quote or double quote basta string. Control S, nandun pa rin. Okay, so what else? What about numbers? So pag numbers, pwede ko siyang i-reassign lang. Ito yung sinasabi natin. Pwede mong i-reassign yung var. So example, 2, 5, 6. Okay, so now I have 256 here. So if you notice, blue na siya kasi numbers na siya. Okay. So what else we can do with the var? Alright, so let's try to initialize variable first. Initialize variable. Okay, so paano ba mag-initialize ng variable? Paano ba? Var. Uh, ano bang magandang variable? GF name. Okay. So, ganito mag-initialize ng variable. Wala tayong value na nilagay gaya dito sa taas. Variable name lang siya. If we console.log this variable na wala pang value, mara-receive natin is, op, dapat gf name na no. Undefined. So, bakit undefined? Kasi wala tayong nilagay na value dito. Alright? Do that. Lagyan natin siya ng value. Sino bang magandang, sino bang, ano, sino bang artistang pinangarap niyong maging girlfriend? Uh, let's see, gusto niya si Catherine. Oops. Catherine. Bernardo. Oh my God! Wow! 
to idol ko to eh. Ang ganda nung last na movie niya na Hello Love Goodbye um, sa mga OFW. Okay, and then console that lol GF and now we have Catherine Bernardo in our console. Okay, so that's how to initialize variables. Okay, so may mga limitations kung paano tayo mag-declare ng variables. Ano may ibig sabihin? Hindi tayo pwedeng gumamit ng variable na nagsimula sa number. We can only use uh, letters, numbers at the start. Pwede rin underscore or pwede rin dollar sign. So, the rules for variable declaration. Okay lang natin dito. Oops. Comment lang natin. Must start with letters. Pwede ring numbers. Pwede ring underscore. Pwede ring dollar sign. Okay? So, but usually, pag ako gumagawa ka ng variables, ginagamit ko yung letters from the start. Okay, so example, var num2 equals 15. Pwede yan. Pwede yung format na yan. Pwede ring var num or var underscore num2 equals 10. O, oh, pwede rin yan. Pwede ring dollar sign var num2 oops equals 5. So, itong dollar sign usually ginagamit to sa makikita nyo usually to usually use in jQuery. So, pag gumagawa ka ng jQuery, lahat ng mga variables na makikita mo minsan or halos lahat may dollar sign. Like selecting objects in the DOM. So, yan yung usually ginagamit sa jQuery. Okay? So, hindi pwedeng numbers. Gaya nito. Cannot start with numbers. Example, 2 num equals 10. O, kita nyo, nagre-red na siya. Dito, uncut syntax error, invalid or unexpected token. So, hindi siya pwedeng numbers. Okay? So, comment lang natin yan. Guys, pag nag-comment kayo, may shortcut ha. Control backslash on your keyboard. Pag inan comment nyo naman, highlight nyo lang yung na-comment mo na. And then, i-press mo lang ulit yung control key sa keyboard nyo. And then, backslash ulit, mag-uncomment na siya. Okay? So, comment, control, control backslash. And then, uncomment again. Highlight mo lang. Control backslash again. So, ganun lang. Okay? Another thing is the most professional way of declaring variables. Okay. So, ano ba? Ito yung ginagamit ko palagi. Last name equals Okay, so mapapansin nyo dito, yung first word ko is, uh, yung first part ng word na ginamit ko sa variable is small letter. And then the second one is big letter. So ang tawag dito, tawag dito sa declaration ito, camel case type. So ito yung recommended ko na gamitin nyo, di lang sa JavaScript at na rin sa ibang programs na ginagawa nyo. Okay. So, parang malinis lang siyang tingnan. So, tawag dyan is camel case type. Uh, second one is we have this uh, last name and score like that. Equals Bernardo. Tawag naman dito is underscore type. So, usually, makikita nyo to pag gumagawa kayo ng mga PHP na program nyo. Oops. Underscore Type. Okay, so typically in PHP. Okay, mayroon ding ganito lang. Small letter lahat. O, ganyan. So, ito, I don't recommend using this one. Mayroon din tayong ganito. Last name. Capital, long, capital yung first word, first part ng word, 
And then, capital letter din yung last part ng word. So, ano to? Tawag dito, Pascal case. Okay? So, usually, pag gumagawa tayo ng mga object-oriented programming, like, gumagawa tayo ng classes and constructor. So, kailangan itong format na to. Okay? So, but dito sa JavaScript na to, Itong client side na ginawa lang natin, ito yung pinaka-recommended ko. Alright? So, I hope klaro dyan sa inyo kung paano yung tamang pag-declare ng mga variables. E para sa huli, mas maganda ng tingnan yung program nyo. Alright, so let's move on to cons or let. Masyado siyang magulo, i-move lang natin to sa taas. So, copy lang natin to sa taas ito. Para... Dito lang natin nilagay. Okay. Ito yung y, ito yung let. Let. Examples. So, para lang siyang var. Very identical siya sa var. Kopihin lang natin yan. Palitan lang natin to ng let. Actually, I just comment this out. Like that. And then, let's comment this out also. The same lang, pinalitan lang natin is let lang na keyword. And then, mayroon pa rin siya dyan. Okay? So, parehas lang siya. Ngayon, dito na papasok yung sinabi natin dito sa taas na yung let, we use let for block level scope lang. And then, yung var, we use it for declaring variable to global scope. So, gawa tayo ng example dito. Example for var and let differences. Okay, so let's have some for each loop right here. Even though wala pa tayo sa for loop, but just to show you an example para makita yung difference of var and let. Okay, so for then nagay lang tayo dito ng var num1 equals 1 num1 is less than 5 or let's make it 4. Num1 plus plus. Okay. So, let's console that log here. Lalag lang natin yung num1 natin. So, we have here 1, 2, 3. But, what if nag-console that log ako ulit dito sa baba? Kita nyo may 4 na ako dito. So, yung... Variable na number 1, pwede ko siyang gamitin outside and inside of the block level scope. Diba yung block level scope, dapat nasa load ng bracket siya? Kasi ka, global scope yung var, sabi natin dito, dyan, global scope siya, pwede mo siyang gamitin globally. Meaning, outside and inside of the block level scope. So, what if pinalitan natin to ng let? Ano mangyayari? Galing lang natin yan. Ganun pa rin, may 1, 2, 3 tayo kasi nasa loob tayo ng black level scope, nasa loob tayo ng bracket. So, gumagana ng let doon. But, what if nag-console that lag tayo ulit dito sa baba ng num1? You can see may ear na tayo. So, num1 is not defined at main. Ibig sabihin, di na siya pwedeng gagana dito kasi wala na siya sa black level scope kasi nakalet na tayo. So, isa yan sa difference ng Sayang sa pinagkaiba ng let. Okay? Comment lang natin yan. Another difference is hoisting. So, mga di pa naka-encounter ng hoisting. Ito yung tawag sa JavaScript na yung variables and function declaration mo are move to the top of the scope. So, ibig sabihin, kahit na yung variable declaration mo nasa baba pa ng scope mo, kasi nga naka-hoisting, magra-run pa rin siya. So, ang var, hoisted, ibig sabihin, supported niya yung ho hoisting, but let is not hoisted. Alright, so let's make a hoisting example for var.
it's saying the declare natin ang number 1 equals to 3 and then console.log num1 and then dito, na, dito natin siya i-initialize sa baba var num1 so bakit siya hoisting? kasi nga yung scope natin nandito sa taas pero yung declaration natin nandito sa baba so dahil var siya big sabihin hoisted siya gagana pa rin siya so control s natin yan may 3 na tayo sa console natin okay so what if gamitan natin lang let ito gagana ba? hindi siya gagana kasi nga yung let is not hoisted okay so var will work so yan sa difference Another thing is hoisting. Hoisting only works in declaration, but not with initialization. So, ano ibig sabihin? Ano bang ibig sabihin ng declaration? Ito, ito yung sample ng declaration. Dineclare natin yung num1 with a value of 3. Itong tawag dito, ito yung initialization. So, magbigay tayo ng example dito. Hindi siya pwede sa declaration. But, pwede siya sa declaration, but di siya pwede sa initialization. Or di siya gumagana sa initialization. Example. Ito, declaration na yan. Ha? Sa initialization naman, initialization example. Example, nag-consult.log tayo kaga dito console.log let's make num3 and then sa baba mayroon tayong initialization sa num3 equals to 5 do you think it will work? no see? undefined yung lumabas kasi nga yung yung hoisting only works on declaration hanggang dito lang siya yan initialization yan ito declaration na to so hindi siya pwedeng ganyan Okay? Dito sa hoisting na ito, dineclare natin yung num1 dito na 3. O gumagana siya. Nag, Nagka-console.log tayo dito. May return value tayo dito. Kasi nga, gumagana siya sa declaration. Pero hindi pwede dito sa initialization. So, ang hoisting kasi, ang nangyayari dyan is parang yung variable mo is na-add sa memory. So, kahit nandito pa siya sa baba, basta var yung ginamit mo. Dahil sa hoisting, para siyang namumove sa taas ng scope mo. Ito. Example dito, oh. Kahit dito natin siya dinig-tear sa baba, yung var na, na yung num1 mo, dahil hoisting ha, exported yung var, para siyang namumove sa taas. So, naka-add siya sa memory first. Okay? So, I hope klaro sa inyo yan. Yan yung pinagkaiba ng var at let. Okay? So, ang var is hoisted, ang let is not hoisted. Alright? So, anong rule of thumb dito? Rule of thumb, always declare your variables at the beginning of every scope. Okay? So, to avoid debugging problems in the future, di mo na alam na nagbimix-mix na yung mga variables mo. Kasi nga, yung iba nalagay mo sa baba, yung iba na sa taas. So, ito lang yung tandaan mo. Dapat lahat ng variable mo is na-declare before sa scope mo. Even though may hoisting tayo sa JavaScript which works with var, it's better to follow this rule. Right? <coughs> okay, so let's move on with cons. So, comment out lang natin to. Punta na tayo sa cons. So, sa cons, sabi nga natin constant, tingnan natin dito, cannot be changed or reassigned, must be initialized. Okay? Example, cons, div name, may div name na ba tayo dito sa taas? O, nakakomment tayo, so pwede na siyang gamitin. Div name equals Pinoy dev. Magkoconsole.log lang tayo dito siya pwedeng i-reassign. Yari, palitan natin siya ng value na 
American Dev. Okay, so yan, may error na tayo. Assignment to constant variable. So, hindi siya pwede yung reassign. So, lagyan na natin yung comment to. Cannot be reassigned. Okay. Comment lang natin yan. So, itong cons, meaning constant, cannot be changed. Or reassigned. Cannot be changed or reassigned. And must be initialized with a value. So what if we initialize natin siya na walang value? Try natin. Cons. Div name. Anong mangyayari pag walang value? Pong. Yan. May error na tayo kasi missing identity. Initializer in constant declaration. What if lagyan natin ng blank? Of course, pwede yan. Kasi may equals na eh. Ibig sabihin ito yung initialization natin. Pero hindi siya pwedeng ganyan. Okay? Let me initialize without a value. So, di ba const di siya pwedeng i-reassign or change. But, when it comes to arrays and objects, pwede mong i-mutate or pwede mong actually baguhin yung data inside sa array or sa object na yun. Okay? So, example, hindi pa tayo nakarating sa arrays and objects, but I just want to give you an example of how it works. So, example, ob, uh, cons and arrays. So, gagawa lang tayo ng arrays, cons, num1 equals... When it comes to arrays, you must enclose it with brackets like this. Okay? So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Console.log. We have here the index and we have the value. Index starts with 0. We have the values right here. I can mutate or add values inside of this array. Okay? So, to do that, I just want to use the, the push method. Num one that push, and then the value that you want to add inside is say seven. Control S, you can see my seven na ako dito. Pero hindi mo siyang gawing ganito. Hindi mo siya pwedeng reassign kasi nga constant siya. So pag ginawa mong ganito, ilagyan mo ng uh, num one equals one two three four. 5, 6, nagdagdag ka ng 7 dito, hindi pwede yan. Assignment to constant variable. Oh. Hindi siya pwede. Pero, pwede mong baguhin yung data na nasa loob ng array na yun or object na yun. Okay? So, hindi pwedeng ganyan. Reassign. So, let's move on to objects. Or object laterals. So, so object. Div name. Okay? So, object, you must enclose it with brackets. Like that. Name, colon. So, for objects, we have the key right here with a pair value. So, value pag string is, must enclose it with quotes or double quotes. Okay, na-discuss na natin yan. If you want to add another key value, pair, just press comma. Let's add some age right here. For numbers, wala na double quotes, right? Comment lang natin to. And then, dito tayo mag-console.log. Then, we use div name. So, what happened is, may objects na tayo dito. The same thing with arrays. Hindi mo siya pwedeng reassign kanina na gumawa ka ng bagong const div name. Tapos, ito, 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 ito. Div name. Hindi pwede yan. Okay? So, pwede mo lang gawin is pwede mong baguhin yung nasa loob na data niya. Example. Baguhin natin yung age. Div name, press the dot, and then the, the key inside that you want to change, example age, equals 200. Okay? So when you save, control S on your keyboard, you can see here my 200 that I say age niya. If you want to display the age only, div name that age, just like that, and you got 200 here. Same also with the name. 
okay we have binoid right here okay that's how cons work it works in arrays and objects by changing the data inside but you cannot reassign it all right so sa point na to ikaw na yung magdi-decide kung anong classing variable types or anong classing keywords yung gamitin mo pag nag-declare ka ng variables if you want to use cons and let or var so para sa akin kasi pag ang value is constant ibig sabihin hindi siya nag-change in all types i would use cons other than that, if it is changing like we use in the loops or conditional statements, then it's better to use let. So I think that's all for variable declaration in JavaScript. Alright, so let's move on to data types. Close lang natin to. Then go lang tayo ng bagong folder dito. Click nyo lang yan. Let's name this one as data types. Okay. The same thing, we will create our index. .html. And then our main dot js file. Okay, so go back to your index.html and create a blank HTML structure like we did before. Okay, so punctuation tab key. Let's name this one as data types. Go lang din tayo ng h1 dito. Copy nyo lang yan. And then the same thing, we will link our JavaScript. src tab main that gs okay it's preview this one in our browser close lang natin yung previous na tabs labasin lang natin yung console okay so now let's go to our main.js file comment lang natin dito uh, data types all right so we have two data types in javascript we have the primitive types under reference Okay, so yung primitive types, ito yung numbers, strings, booleans, null, undefined, and the newly added during the ES6 standard, which is symbol. Okay. So we have six primitive data types. Now let's start with numbers. Let's use the keyword cons and then num1 equals let's say five. Let's try the console that long this one just to make sure it's a number. Now let's try to use a function called type of here. This function will return the data type of the operand on a form of string. So example, gusto mong tingnan yung num1 mo kung string ba talaga siya. Put mo lang dyan, num1, and see in the console. Okay, so number yung mabas. Kasi nga, number ang value ng num1 dito. Alright? Let's try with string. Let's create a variable here called div name. No idea. Try to copy that one and output to the console. Change the variable name. Okay, so now we have a string in the console right here. Let's try with uh, null or booleans. Booleans, this is either true or false. Cons, uh, love life, <laughs> equals false. Ibig sabihin ngayon, wala kang love life. Happy mo lang yan. And then, change the variable. Let's see if it's boolean. Now, it's boolean. Okay? Let's move on to null. Okay, so let's declare a variable called what? Girlfriend equals null. So, ngayon wala kang girlfriend. <laughs> okay, so let's try to output this one to the console. Just to check if it is a null. Okay, ito guys, baka ma-confuse kayo na object yung lumabas dito sa console. So, just remember yung null pag nag-console ka is object. Okay? Don't be confused with that. 
So next is undefined. Let's try to use let for now. Let first date and then console.log type of first date. Now we have undefined here. Okay. Next and the last one is symbol. So itong data types na to, di ko siya masyadong ginagamit kasi wala naman akong mga projects na gumagamit ako ng symbol. But just to show you an example, you can just use it like this. Cons, sim, or your variable name, whatever you want, and then the function symbol. Okay. So let's console.log.1. Change the variable name. Now we have symbol right here. Okay, so let's move on to reference types. Reference. These are arrays, object laterals, laterals, date, functions. Alright, so let's start with arrays. Oops. So arrays, you must enclose it with brackets, okay? Brackets, and then your value inside. One, two, three, four, five. Oops. Let's try to console this one. Now we have our arrays with index and value right here. Okay, so let's try with objects or object laterals object laterals you must enclose with parentheses just like this okay so now we will put our key value pair name of course one of my favorite artists Catherine Bernardo, comma, to create another key value pair, age, how old is she, I think, 22, I don't know, it's a guess, let's try the console, that like this one, num3, now we have our objects, now let's try with date, const first date equals new date. And 28 to 0 It's just console that like this one. Oops. Identify first date. Oh, we have first date. Now let's just change it to birth date because we already have first date at the top right here. Let's change this to birth date. Okay. Now we have our date right here. So I think hanggang dito na lang muna tayo kasi medyo mahaba na yung video. So in the next episode, we will discuss data type conversion, like how to convert string to numbers and vice versa. We will also discuss arrays to strings and strings to arrays, JSON to strings, vice versa. And then we will discuss math objects and numbers. We will also discuss string concatenation. And if we still have time, we will discuss with simple literals and conditional statements. Alright guys, so thank you for watching. Please subscribe and share this video with your friends to help this channel and for me to continue making learning videos like this.